Hey guys, what's going on? It's 2F0T back with some great news to report. I was able to dive into the dwell control and voice control settings, and I am successfully able to make windows larger and smaller and move them around and also scroll up and down. So I am going to do a demo of how to get those settings set up on your Vision Pro and also show you how they work. Stay tuned after the demo for my honest impressions of the Vision Pro after using it for several days, for how I plan to use it, and whether it's really going to play a part in my daily life. All right, let's do a quick demo on how to set up and use dwell control and voice control on the Vision Pro. So you can navigate the user interface and use uh, several apps using just your voice and your eyes. We're going to go to settings, scroll up, and we're going to click on accessibility setting, and we're going to go down to interaction, and we're going to click on dwell control. And next to uh, my settings screen, you'll see a little circle. And what that is, it's the dwell control settings. So what I can do there is I can do a couple different things. I can pause dwell control so that I can watch a movie and not have my eye tracking constantly looking at what I'm doing. Um, I can click on gestures so that I can tell dwell control if I want to tap, if I want to scroll, if I want to long press, or if I want to drag something. And I'll show you what each of those different things does. And then I can also fall back. And what that does is it takes you back to the previously selected action before you changed the specific gesture. And within dwell control, you have a couple different settings. Um, the most important setting I think is the number of seconds that you have to dwell on an item before the OS selects it. And it defaults to one second, meaning you have to look at something for a second before dwell control will engage and perform the requested gesture. But as I've been using it now for some time, I have reduced it down to 0.25 seconds, meaning that whenever I look at a specific item, it will select it after 0.25 seconds. And I'm gonna go back to my accessibility settings, scroll down, and I'm going to go to voice control. And what voice control does is it allows you to navigate the interface and perform several commands using just your voice. And you can do a lot of that with the OS's baked in virtual assistant that starts with the S word, which I'm not going to say, so it doesn't activate any of your devices, but you can come into the voice control settings and click on commands. And you can look at navigation, gestures, dictation, navigating text, and doing a lot of different things. And I'll show you a couple of them. You can open different apps, scroll down. You can tap on things. You can view a list of commands. You can show your keyboard. You can go home or go back. You can look at different gestures, scroll down. You can scroll up and down. You can zoom in and out. Let's look at some advanced gestures. You can drag things, you can tap and hold, scroll down. You can do a lot with text, turn up the volume, take screenshots, and even reboot your device or hang up a call. So now let's use some of these different things that I just went over setting up. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to open a note. And here you can see that we have Hello World, because of course, why not pay homage to where it is that we came from, to where we are today. And we're in an absolutely breathtaking place uh, in the Vision Pro. So if I want to add to the text, I'm going to focus on the text field. And as you can see, as I'm speaking, it is typing in every word that I say. And the reason for that is because I have voice control enabled. So what I generally like to do is when I'm going to be typing, I will turn off voice control. And I can do that easily by saying, Siri, turn off voice control. And then what I'll do is I will select in the text field, select all, and delete. And now I can type using my eyes, and I can do that just by hovering over each individual letter.
And there we go. We just typed hello world using our eyes only. But let's say we wanted to delete the word world. We could do a long press. And we could select the word. And we could delete it. Now let's say we wanted to move, uh, or let's say we wanted to actually resize the notes window. We'd go to our gestures. We'd go to drag. Look at the corner. And look at where we want to resize it to. And it made it a nice little compact window. And now we can go back to gestures. Drag. and move it right up here. How cool was that? Now let's open another app and put it right up there next to it. Siri, open Apple Music. And let's move it. We'll move it right next to Notes. Well, let's move it over just a little bit. And now we've got it right next to the Notes app. And now let's say we wanted to uh, browse a little bit. Siri, open Safari. Siri, open Safari. And now let's turn voice control back on. Siri, turn on voice control. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. And we can scroll through a web page with our voice. We can control it with our eyes. And we can use several different apps in our workspace all at the same time. And if we want to resize them, we can do just that. There we go, we've got it open front and center. And that's a quick overview on enabling and using dwell control and voice control on the Vision Pro. I have to say that I am very, very impressed with the Vision Pro as a whole, especially in terms of its accessibility. I really only just scratched the surface of what the Vision Pro can do in terms of its accessibility features, but I do look forward to spending some more time diving into them to see what all the Vision Pro accessibility really can do and what it can offer to people with different needs. All right, so the million dollar question, is the Vision Pro gonna become a permanent part of my daily life? And the jury really is still out because as wonderful of a media consumption device it is, I have not yet found applications to warrant replacing any of my current devices with it or really including it in my overall workflows. I think the pass-through is wonderful and it allows you to see the world around you, but it is still fuzzy. I think that the cameras can certainly get better. I hope that the Vision Pro gets lighter and a bit smaller so it's more in like a glasses form factor as opposed to goggles. I hope the battery life gets better and that we don't have to carry the battery around with us everywhere we go. But of course I'd rather do that than having a battery attached to my head. But these are all first generation issues that I have no doubts will continue to iterate and develop and resolve over time. That being said, the real value in the Vision Pro is going to come from how developers take advantage of this breathtaking piece of technology. Apple has created a tool and a foundation for something that we've never experienced before, and developers now need to take advantage of it. And I do ask that as you do develop for it, that you keep those with physical challenges or different abilities in mind and make the most of the accessibility features that Apple has put into the device or put in your own that will allow as many people as possible to use the wonderful apps that you develop and that you can come up with. As the Vision Pro continues to iterate, it will be in more people's hands, on more of their heads, and 
it's of course in the developer's best interest for their apps to be used as many people as possible. I really do implore you to keep everybody in mind, including those with different abilities, as you are developing to make them as accessible to everybody, because this truly can be the future of computing and I really look forward to what the opportunities are. I thank you for going with me on this journey as I explore the Vision Pro and the accessibility of it. And I do have a lot more content planned, so I ask you to like, subscribe, and share so that we can bring more awareness to the resources and technologies that are available to people with physical challenges and make the world overall a more welcoming place. Thank you so much for your time.